the one guy who has opened my eyes that on the on draft day I said, Oh, what? Why? I don't get that pick was Ronnie Bell in the seventh round. I just didn't get it. I'm like, you have Jennings, you got Debo, you got Ayuk, you got Danny Gray, you got Ray Ray McLeod. You could make an argument. You don't even have room on your roster for a six wide receiver. And yet you still you sign Chris Conley. You have Tay Martin. You got Willie Sneed. And then you sign guys like Isaiah Winstead uh, and Shea Wyatt after the draft. But Ronnie Bell, his the ball skills that Ronnie Bell possesses, just in watching the rookie minicamp and then one day of practice, I mean, I haven't seen this guy not catch the ball. I mean, if it if the ball hits his hands, the ball is caught. Um, he's not that big. He's not that fast. There's You look at him, you don't go, oh, yeah, you know what? That's there. There's the guy. No, he doesn't look like the guy. He doesn't look like anything, really. I mean, no attack on Ronnie. He just doesn't. He's not overly big. He doesn't have incredibly long arms. You look at him run, he doesn't run that well. He's a middling prospect in every way imaginable except when the ball is in the air and this guy will go get it. And the ball skills are off the charts. I haven't seen him drop a single pass and I've seen him catch like seven different kinds of passes. Um, what, what did you, what do you make of the wide receiver competition? what do you think of that name? what do you think of, cause he, we all saw him at Michigan tore up his knee in 2021, but he came back with a vengeance this last year. And, um, uh, Man, he has looked so good on the practice field. I, I really like Ronnie Bell. Um, he was a guy that I was kind of consistently mocking to the Niners late in that you know seventh round window. Um, for the reason you you mentioned, there wasn't a ton of physical traits that jumped out. If you look at the RAS and all these uh, you know these number sets and data that we have to look at athletic scores, nothing really pops out or is you know in my opinion noteworthy based on that alone. But if you watch the way the guy plays, um, he just plays with a level of competitiveness and a level of want where, um, like you mentioned, like, like he's going to will himself to bring that ball in, even if he doesn't run the fastest 40 or have the highest vertical jump. And you saw it time and time again uh, during his time at Michigan. And you know, I think there's a lot of guys like that in the league where we, we look back and we're like, man, how did this many teams overlook this guy? I think Brock Purdy at another position is a great example where even if you don't check all these athletic boxes, there's just certain guys that have the ability to play football at a higher level than others. And you can ignore the athletic profiles for a select group of players where they just, ha they just have it. And I know it's very vague and I, I apologize for not really – expanding on that further but that's just kind of how i look at it like some guys just have it like you can sit here and you can look at all this data and all the testing scores and all that stuff either you can go in and you can catch a contested football in a high pressure moment and get your feet down in bounds or you can't and i think a guy like ronnie bell just kind of proves that as much as you need to be an athlete to a certain extent i think we kind of overvalue that stuff a little bit too much sometimes larry and i think that there are plenty of guys in the league um, when you look at that, like, you know, a guy like Antonio Brown, who was one of the best receivers of this generation, he, he didn't really have many athletic traits that jumped out when he was drafted by Pittsburgh, but he just won over and over and over again. And I think when you look at a guy like Ronnie Bell, um, he's a great example of that just innate ability to excel playing the sport of football, where you can just disregard any of the athletic traits. And I, th I think really where he's going to excel and pan out is I think he's going to be the slot receiver that they really haven't, I don't want to say they haven't had, because they've had that big slot with Jennings and they've had some success with that. But I think that he's going to give them kind of what Trent Taylor gave them before he had those foot problems and he had the injuries before leaving to Cincinnati, where you get a guy that can isolate on the inside and really create mismatches. Um, I think he's going to excel as a slot receiver. That's kind of where I'm projecting him to end up. But, um, yeah, he, he, he's, he's just, he can play football at a high level and that's all that matters at the end of the day. So it's a humble reminder to not get too caught up in all these testing scores and stuff like that. Um, I, I see the chat talking about Cooper cup. It's another great example where, you know, Kendrick Bourne, some of these guys where what did cup run? Uh, I forget. It wasn't great. I, I, I don't know if you're asking like, Ronnie. Was, I thought it was like four, six, two. Yeah. I thought it was something like that. I mean, and it makes it, I mean, I really like your ability to handicap a lot of these players and, and you got a good eye for it. Uh, so you liked Ronnie Bell in the draft, huh? In the draft. I did. Up? 
I did. He was somebody that I, I had in a couple of my Niners Nations mocks. Um, I, I, I just, you know, once you're getting to that point, you have to take dart throws on guys where you're just watching them. You're like, damn, like that, that guy's a football player. Like that, yeah. that guy has what it takes. And I think it's so easy to get caught up in measurables. I'm guilty of it as well. Sure. But- and, and the combine's on TV now. So, <laughs> you know, that's part of it. I think we all kind of run with it. You know, a perfect example, like uh, Jordan Mason, who I think is going to have a, a big, big role this year, um, is another guy where if you look at him, uh, you know, at Georgia Tech for a while, he's behind, you know, Jameer Gibbs, who's, what was he, like a top 12 pick? Um, he ended up going this year. Yeah. And, you know, so is it an indictment on him or is it just, hey, you happen to be sharing a backfield with a really talented guy? He ends up being an undrafted player. And I remember talking to uh, Jeff Collins, who was his coach at Georgia Tech, and he was like, hey, man, like, I think a lot of people just overlook, uh, you know, JP, they call him JP. He's like, a lot of people overlook JP just because the workload wasn't there, but that wasn't it, it, due to his skill set. He's a damn good football player, and you're going to see that. And right away in training camp, I'm sure you remember last year, to me, he looked like the best running back on the field for the majority of training camp last year. No, and no. Here, he, here he is, this guy that wasn't drafted, 250 players get drafted. He's not one of them, but... I don't think you could sit here and say that 250 of those players in that draft are better football players than Jordan Mason as he averaged six and a half yards a carry in his rookie season. So um, some of these guys don't get evaluated properly for a number of reasons, but I don't think that it's fair to handicap Ronnie Bell just because he was a seventh round pick that was taken at the very end. He could end up being a guy where we're again, looking at it like, damn, how did this many teams pass on this guy? And I think he, he, out of all the picks the Niners made, is the guy that has the biggest opportunity to be that kind of Brock Purdy where it's like, how did the NFL let this guy fall into the lap of the 49ers? It's so, to me, it's so interesting. And maybe it's only me because I'm a personnel guy and I've devoted a lot of my life to, to personnel evaluation. But to me, it's really interesting. When we get into day three of the draft, late on day three, or even after the draft, some teams reach out for guys that have one freaky thing, right? This guy's got a 47 inch vertical. Wow. You know, um, um, this guy's, you know, runs a four two nine. Wow. You know, it's like, um, and then look what the Niners have been able to do in the last couple of years, not doing, not playing it that way, but playing it the other way at the end of the draft where they're like, you know what? I don't care what the measurables say. I'm going to trust my scouts to go find football players like you just described Brock Purdy in a lot of ways is the Ronnie bell at quarterback, right? He's not big enough. He's not fast enough. He's not this enough. He's not that enough, but man, he was damn good at Iowa state and look what he's doing now. And I, I, you know, I want, you know, it's ironic too, because two years ago when the Niners drafted uh, Brock Purdy, I went, God, really? Oh, what a wasted pick. I can honestly sit there and, and say I thought it was a total wasted pick. And because um, I just I, I saw a small and I saw not much of an arm and I, I just didn't. I, I'm like, oh, my God, you're going to you're going to invest a draft choice in a backup quarterback. Why? Why would they do that? And then this year I said the same thing about Ronnie Bell. Oh, my God. How is this guy even going to make the team? And yet Brock has become Brock and Ronnie Bell has been incredible. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know how Ronnie makes the team, but if he continues to do going forward, what I've seen him do to this point, he is going to make the team because he catches everything that you throw out there and uh, he actually kind of gets open. So um, very intriguing player.